you don't um, <coughs> just do observations on, on primates. You also designed lots of experiments to actually uh, yeah. test hypotheses, uh, which is interesting because obviously you can't ask a monkey what its personal sense of justice is. So what do you do? How do you, wh how do you run an experiment? And what are some of the things that you find out from your experiments that tell you some more about empathy? Yeah, I was initially just a, a monkey watcher, you could say. And, and uh, so when I started my studies, I spent in, in the Arthur Arnhem Zoo with the chimpanzees, I spent maybe 10,000 hours watching them and taking notes and videotaping and things like that. And when I came to the U.S., I, I really had the feeling that I needed to do more than that. And uh, when I, especially when I came to Emory, I set up a, a monkey lab with capuchin monkeys where I decided to do systematic experiments. And so the monkeys would still live in a group and we would still do observations, but we would train them to come out and into experiments that we would do with them. And the same with chimpanzees. We do the same. The, the big difference is that chimpanzees are dominant over us, and, but we are dominant over the monkeys. And so, so we have an easier time getting the monkeys to do a task than the chimpanzees. But um, what we do with the monkeys, for example, a, a very simple experiment where you, you give them an item, let's say, uh, this is the, the token. Uh, I, give, I give the monkey, I throw it, the monkey sits in a little test chamber. So I throw it in the test chamber, I hold up my hand, the monkey has to give it back, and as soon as it gives it back, it gets a reward. If you put two monkeys side by side, and you train them on little cucumber slices for the exchange. They happily do this 30 times in a row. And they get the cucumber as a reward. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so it is a very little experiment that takes 20 minutes, and then we send them back to the group after that. Uh, and so 30 times in a row. And it's a boring experiment because they do it all the time. Now, if you give one of the two grapes instead of cucumber, so, so you, this one's still getting cucumber. This one is now getting grapes. And grapes are so much better than cucumber. <laughs> The one who gets grapes has no problems with the task, but the one who gets cucumber now all of a sudden gets agitated and, uh, and, and throws the tokens out of the cage, <laughs> throws the food even, that's very strange, to throw the food away. They do that, so food that normally is perfectly good, that any time you give these monkeys a piece of cucumber, they take it and they eat it, now it's not good enough anymore. Uh, it, it's a bit like, you know, our, our reaction to Wall Street is very much that kind of, I always say we live in cucumber land and they live in grape land. Mm -hmm. so, so, it, so it's a very, I think it's a very understandable reaction. But when we first reported it, I did this study with Sarah Brosnan, uh, people got very upset with us because the economists and the anthropologists and the philosophers, <laughs> they had defined fairness mm -hmm. and they had, they had found a fancy word for fairness, uh, which was a sort of behavioral term, which was, Inequity aversion. You're aversive to inequity. Now, these monkeys, they were inequity averse, clearly. And so we started using that term, and they got very upset and said, we never intended that to be applied <laughs> to animals, you know, but, uh, but we're, we're doing it. And actually, this has taken off now. There's now a study on dogs and show the same reaction. There's several studies on monkeys. There's a new study coming out on monkeys. It's been done on chimpanzees. And, and I bet all cooperative animals are going to show one way or another, uh, well, not ants or something, but all cooperative mammals are going to show this sort of reaction. Mm -hmm.